Hi, I'm Alan. I'm one of the anaesthetic trainees here at the Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham and the aim of this short film is to describe and demonstrate low-skill fibre optic intubation using the Intrigue catheter. Afterwards, you should be able to use the video to guide further practice before you actually use the technique on patients. By the end of this, you should be able to describe the indications for low-skill fibre optic intubation in the context of DAS guidance, list the equipment you require, be able to set it up properly, demonstrate how to do it on a mannequin and identify and avoid any of the common errors with this technique. In 2004, DAS guidance advised the use of low-skill fibre optic intubation via an intubating LMA or an LMA where direct laryngoscopy had failed, but you could ventilate the lungs. However, you could also elect to use one of the other following GA techniques in order to intubate the trachea, such as an indirect laryngoscopy using an air track or an asleep fibre optic intubation. The advantage of the, using the Aintree catheter over the others are it's a single operator technique, you maintain ventilation and volatile anaesthesia throughout, and the use of an LMA as a holding measure gives you a little bit of time to think. Okay, so now I'll show you how to perform a low-skill fibre fiber optic intubation using the Aintree catheter. To begin with, we'll do it without any commentary. Then I'll repeat the process, breaking up into bite-sized chunks and explaining what I'm doing at each step. We'll also be able to give you some top tips. Right, I can't see anything, so let's just go back to the game. Um, I've had three goes now. Let's go for a low skill fibre top, fibre optic intubation using the entry catheter. Please, should you get me a fibre scope, a difficult airway trolley, and a camera stack? Yep, okay. Right, so you've got a nice job, please. Yep, I'll just get it ready. Okay, ventilating nicely. Could you just take over bagging for me while I get everything else yep. together? Okay, I think we're ready. So, switch over the top here, and then get in there. Can you just pass me the bronchoscope, please? If you just hit the one button at the bottom left of the screen there, it's the white button at the bottom. Ventilating. That's great. Make sure I've got this. So we just disconnect here, we're going to take the eye gel out and just hang on to the entry. So if we disconnect this one first. If you can just grab the bottom of the entry there. You got it? Yep. Okay, great. And again, if you could just grab the entry for me, just when it comes out the top. I've got it. Okay. Okay, that's
sounds great. You can come over the entry now. Okay. Shall we convert to that? That's fantastic. So, okay, so we'll have a quick check, make sure where we are. Just grab the cheap for it. Yeah, got it. Take that in there. Okay. Okay, so there's a fair amount going on there. Before we break this down into individual steps, let's look at some of the equipment that you're going to need. Firstly, you need an eye gel. These superglossic airway devices very similar to normal LMAs, but they don't have any diaphragm, and you insert them in a slightly different manner. You also lubricate them differently as well with some water-based lubricant on the back of this plastic holder and then you lubricate the back first then the sides and then the tip you do it that way just to avoid getting any jelly over the opening of the eye gel next you're going to need your entry catheter this is a cook entry catheter it comes with uh, two different uh, rapid fit connectors at the end. It will come with a 15mm standard connector at the end initially, and this one you can connect to any standard anaesthetic breathing equipment. And it's this white clip here to pull one and off. It also comes with one for jet ventilation as well, but you're not going to need that. They've got a distal end with two extra holes in the lateral walls to ensure that you can ventilate your patient. They have centimetre markings along the length. You're going to need an angle piece with a self-sealing diaphragm, and this means that you can actually use the scope through it whilst maintaining your anaesthetic and maintaining oxygenation of your patient. You're going to need a reinforced tube. I'd advise using at least a size 7 for this. A size 6.5 is very difficult to railroad over an entry, and a size 6 just won't go. In addition to your water-based lubricant, when you're practicing on a mannequin, you also need some of this mannequin lubricant just to help uh, with the uh, insertion of the LMA and passage of the catheter. You wouldn't need this in a real patient. Now let's have a look at the camera. Okay, so in terms of setting up your camera and your scope, the light source and the camera may be attached already, but in terms of focusing and white balancing, if you ask your ODP just to hold it over some text or a name badge, and you can focus it using these diopters here at the top. And white balancing, if you focus on something white, and you just press this button here. That's done. Alright, now we're going to lubricate the fiber optic scope itself. You need to get loads of jelly to make sure that your uh, entry is going to run nice and freely. And just avoid getting any jelly right on the tip, otherwise you affect your picture. And then should hold that for me. And then instead of passing your entry catheter, make sure you pass the proximal end onto the uh, camera first. So you've got your distal end with the holes, like we showed you before. And that should just go nice and easily over your camera. And you want to railroad it all the way on. Because if it's not on far enough, you won't be able to move the driving tip of the scope. After you've done that, you need to lubricate your entry catheter as well. Just make sure that can pass through your eye gel nice and easily. And that's now ready to use. Okay, so once you're happy you can ventilate, you need to lubricate the inside of the eye gel. You only need to do this on the mannequin, you wouldn't need to do it on a real patient. If we just disconnect briefly. This is the stuff you need to use and it comes in the boxes with the mannequin and a couple of sprays is all you need. There we go. And you can attach a self-sealing diaphragm angle piece. And this attaches just like anything else. And you can maintain your oxidation anaesthetic that way. And get your prepared scope and entry. Open up the diaphragm and then ask your assistant just to stabilise the end of that as it goes through and now you can follow yourself on the camera. So we're going down now through the eye gel itself, trying to keep the hole in the middle. You see it's coming to the distal end there, and ahead of us you can see 
the vocal cords. We'll go through those into the trachea. We're going to go all the way down as far as the carina. Now, then, although the tip of the scope's at the carina, if you actually open up the front of the neck of the mannequin, you'll be able to see that the tip of the entry catheter is only just at the glossus. So it's really important at this stage that you advance the entry catheter further in. further than down to where the queen is. So if you stabilize the entry for a minute, yep. take the camera out, put that to one side, we'll do it again in a moment. So now we're going to remove the angle piece first, hanging on to the entry, and we're going to remove the eye gel. So at this stage, if you did need to maintain any oxygenation, you can attach your RapiFit connector to the top of there, and again, you can back your patient to that stage. Okay. So at this point, take your tube, and using the entry just like a bougie, bring the entry out so that your assistant can grab the outside end of it. Be just there, you got it. Got it? And then as you pass the tube, gentle rotation you can just help it slip through and around the vocal cords. If you can take the entry out there. So we've inserted that to 25 centimetres, which is a fair distance in, but we're going to check we can ventilate and then we're going to check the position of the tube as well. So we can ventilate nicely. Still got that angle piece on, so we can maintain ventilation and pass the scope back through there. This time going through your tracheal tube. The tip, and there it is, and you can see it's now sitting above the carina. So if we go down as far as the carina, put my fingers on the outside, pinching the, the scope, and just pull back until I see the tip of my ET tube, which is there. So I'm about three centimeters above the carina with that, which is absolutely fine. So we can go ahead and get on with our case. Okay, so that's the end of the demonstration. So you should now be able to describe the indications for a low-scale fiber optic intubation in the context of the Difficult Airway Society guidance, list the equipment that you need, be able to set it up properly, be able to demonstrate the technique on a mannequin, and also identify and avoid any of the common problems and errors with this technique. Next, we recommend you practice the technique, review the video if you get stuck. Thanks very much.